A couple weeks ago, I did a video on why I converted my short-term rental into a medium-term rental. But in case you didn't watch that video, let me catch you up to speed. My first true love was short-term rentals, and I listed my tiny house on Airbnb, and then it was crushing it. You had me at hello. You had me at hello. Then COVID and several regulations hit, and I had to break up with my first true love. What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? Eventually finding a new squeeze called Medium Term Rentals, where I'd eventually list both my tiny home and my primary residence in Los Angeles for 30 days at a time. Now, if you don't remember, short term rentals are anything that are one to 30 days. Medium term rentals are 30 days plus, most of the time a month to month lease that's fully furnished. And then long term rentals are gonna typically be 12 month leases that come unfurnished. Sorry, just had to take a quick, my wife texted me help because one of our children vomited everywhere break and now we're back to YouTube. Okay, now that we're all caught up, I wanted to talk about my medium term rental journey on the two units that I have listed for 30 days at a time and talk about a few of the lessons that I've learned the hard way and a few tips that I'm gonna start implementing in my medium term business strategy. Cool? So the first really tough lesson that I've learned with both of my medium term rentals is that the wear and tear is relatively significant as opposed to a short term rental. Now I actually talked to some not too long ago that felt the opposite. So your mileage may vary here. But for me, I think what I learned is that when people are staying at your place for 30, 60 or 90 days at a time, they start to live in that place, right? They start treating it like it's their own home. And so depending on that person's habits can have a pretty big ramification on how they treat your furniture, right? But even the most considerate, cleanest, tidiest of people are still using your stuff every single day. Now, if you follow along with my short term rental strategy, typically the best occupancy rate for a short term rental is 70 to 80%. Now, I used to say 100% quite a bit on the channel, but I've since shifted this. And the reason is that when someone is in your place for 70% or 80% of the time, then that means that your place is being unoccupied for 20 to 30% of the time, meaning that the wear and tear is 20 to 30% less over time, but also your utilities are gonna be about 20 to 30% less, right? But with the medium term rental, if someone is living in there full time effectively, they're in there all day. They're in there all day during the weekends. They're not being tourists that are going out for eight hours at a time and then just coming to your place to sleep, they're actually using every amenity that you offer. And because of that, there's just more wear and tear. So the tip that I've taken away here is something that I say quite a bit on the channel, and it's just to invest in good furniture. And I actually think that investing in better furniture for a medium term rental actually makes more sense than a short term rental, simply because it's just standing up to daily use over and over and over again. So when you're thinking about going this strategy, I would definitely buy nice, not thrice, right? Very iconic statement on the Raw Built channel, if that even exists. But I really believe that, especially with things like couches, chairs, like dining chairs, dining tables, and dressers. That stuff is gonna be used, punched, prodded, poked, kicked every single day. So make sure that you're investing in very solid quality furniture. It's gonna be a little bit more expensive up front, but over the long term, it's gonna benefit you. Harsh lesson number two that I've learned along the way is that the cleaning procedures are really quite intense compared to a short-term rental. When you think about how a short-term rental turnover goes, typically your cleaners are gonna stay there anywhere from two to four hours. It could be five or six, depends on the size of your place. But really they come in, they wipe down all the surfaces, they clean the floors, and the longest part of their cleaning process is just laundering sheets and towels. And because they're coming in so frequently, it doesn't call for such a deep clean quite so often because they're effectively doing mini deep cleans throughout the entirety of a month. Month. But with the midterm rental, this is a little different, right? We don't have cleaners coming in all the time. And so because of this, if you don't have a tidy guest, that dust starts to collect quite a bit. Maybe they're not good at washing dishes. And so over time, washing dishes poorly starts to compound on itself. And so after months of dishes being washed terribly, they just have layers and layers of gunk on them that your cleaner now has to take care of. Maybe they don't wash sheets. You know, I don't know. How often do you wash your sheets at home? I'd like to know. My wife and I change out our sheets on our bed once a week. I'll say when I was a bachelor, I wasn't doing that. I was washing my sheets, Ooh, never. But all to say, some people just don't wash their sheets often. So I'd love to hear everybody, be honest. Like how often do you wash your sheets? Leave a comment down below, I'd really love to know. But regardless, even if people are washing their sheets every two or three weeks and they're using them every single night and they're, you know, if they're married and there's kids, you just don't know what are happening to your sheets. And because of this, your sheets can get stained. Or if you're like the family that just stayed at my home in Los Angeles, maybe you have kids that just leave gunks of goo literally on on your carpet or maybe there's like a pizza stain on your ceiling because they threw whatever it is on your ceiling or 
maybe there's like weird random red dye and glitter all over your nice $500 accent chairs. Or maybe they just stained your curtains or your shower curtain or like every, literally every curtain in your home. These last guests, super nice people, but it was very clear that they were not clean. And that was a bummer because my cleaner for that home actually wasn't that great to begin with. They were re mostly reliable, but then they came in and they didn't do a good job cleaning and I just so happened to check into that home right after and it was a horrible job. I had to fire those cleaners. It was a bummer. I hate firing people. But all to say, they might have actually kept their job a little bit longer had these guests not been so dirty. But I'm really glad that it worked out the way it did because it really exposed really how subpar my last set of cleaners were. So here's what I'm gonna be changing moving forward. Right now, I'm in the mindset that I'm gonna require a cleaner every two to four weeks, at least every month. So if someone is staying at my place for 90 days, every month I'm gonna charge them a new cleaning fee to send in a cleaner and spruce up the place. It really just behooves everyone that way and it's honestly, even if I had to pay for it out of pocket, it would save me a lot of money in the long run, mostly because I wouldn't have to replace sheets so often. So moving forward, every single time a guest requests to stay at my place, that's more than 30 days, I'm just gonna inform them that the cleaning fee is every month, which I know TikTok is just gonna love. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna up my cleaning fee pretty significantly. Right now, I think on my tiny home, for example, I charge 120, and then on my main home, I charge 185, which is a little bit more than a standard clean for each of those homes. I think I'm just gonna raise my tiny home to 200 bucks, and then my main home to about 300, 350 bucks per month. And that way a cleaner can actually come in and do a deep clean, not just a typical Airbnb turnover. In other words, I want my cleaners to be there for at least eight hours, not two to four. Cause you just can't do a good job in that amount of time for someone that stayed at your place for 90 days. It's impossible. And that's it, that, that, that's that tip. Before moving on to tip number three here, just wanted to say that if you're interested in implementing the medium term rental strategy, maybe converting your Airbnb into a 30 day stay, or you just wanna get into the Airbnb game, consider enrolling in Host Camp. It's my 12 month mentorship program where I teach all the fundamentals of this stuff. If you wanna learn how to do this for me, book a free call with my team over at hostcamp.com. All right, now to the next tip. Third thing that I've sort of realized, I wouldn't say it's a harsh lesson, but I sort of have figured this one out the hard way as my own guest, as a guest in my own Airbnb, and it's that bedding is incredibly important. Obviously, I believe that bedding is important in any capacity, even for short-term rentals, but with medium-term rentals, it's just a little bit more amplified than your typical short-term rental stay. The reason being is if you don't have exceptional bedding for a short-term rental, people are typically staying at your place for one to seven days. They can put up with it, right? They might complain a little bit, or they may not love it, or maybe they do. Like, I, I have relatively relatively good bedding in my Airbnbs, but my point is that most people can put up with it for a short amount of time. But with the medium term rental, because people are staying there 30 days at a time, really 60 to 90 days is my average, they're sleeping on your bed every single day. And so if they have a bad night's rest, that starts to compound over and over and over again. Now I have really nice mattresses on all my Airbnbs. I typically cycle between Zynus, Sleep Signature, and I think there's another one on Amazon called like the Oli or the Olia. We'll, we'll link it all right here. By the way, if you want my shopping list, you can click the link in the description down below. I give all that out for free. You can literally hit add to cart for all of those items and make your life super easy. Again, free in the description down below. But anyways, good bedding goes past the mattress and it actually goes into better sheets and better pillows. For me, I am an LB, which stands for a little when it comes to my sleeping routine, and I'm really particular about the pillows that I can comfortably sleep on every single night. So I slept in my bed in LA and I didn't love the pillows, so I got all new pillows and I got all new sheets too. I typically do a microfiber sheet for short-term rentals, but with medium-term rentals, because they're gonna be used more and they actually do affect your daily mental health and comfort, I actually invested in all cotton sheets. I'll link to my favorite ones down below. They're the Threshold Performance brand. I like these a lot because the patterns are nice, so they hide stains if there are any. They're all cotton and they'll withstand bleach a lot more than a microfiber sheet. They're way more comfortable and they just look nicer too. Like the patterns actually make it look a lot more homey in there. So spent good money on that. I got new Casa Luna quilts for the house too. I actually really love those and those are a Target brand. But the moral of the story here is that you want to invest in good bedding, A, because you want your guests to be extremely comfortable over the course of 90 days, because that could have a pretty good effect on your review. And B, because you're probably going to be bleaching these a lot more than a typical short-term rental stay to get all stains out. I don't even want to show photos of how the, my last set of guests left the sheets. You, you really want stuff that can hold up to bleach and strong detergents and all that stuff. We'll, we'll do more Airbnb tips here coming up. I'm doing a video that's called how I spruced up my Airbnb for a thousand dollars, but I'm gonna shoot it right after this. So stay tuned because that video is coming out soon. Tip number four, not a harsh lesson that I've learned yet, but it's very possible that I will. And so this is really at the top of mind for me, but when you switch to a medium term rental, and I know that I keep saying midterm and medium term, uh, it's a whole thing. They're both correct. If you switch to a medium term rental, it's no longer considered a short-term rental, legally speaking. 
right? Because a short-term rental to most cities consider that to be a one to 30 day stay, whereas midterm rentals are typically 30 days plus, right? And so because they're 30 day plus stays, they actually fall under the jurisdiction in most places as a long-term rental. And because of this, the laws that protect long-term tenants actually apply to medium-term tenants. So to put this simply, squatter rights affect medium-term rentals in a way that short-term rentals aren't affected because usually it's a different set of rules, laws, jurisdictions, ordinances, all that stuff. It's gonna depend county to county. So typically with medium-term rentals, I just leave it all on Airbnb and I trust the Airbnb trust and safety team to help me out if I had a squatter or anything like that. But what I've decided to do moving forward is institute a lease, even if it's for only 30 days. I just personally feel more protected that way. I'll have the protection of the lease, I'll have Airbnb's trust and safety team if things happen, and I'll just have multiple ways to cover my bases that way. So that's the tip there, and the thing, the red flag I really just wanna wave out there is that a medium-term rental for all intents and purposes is a long-term rental. And also the term intents and purposes is not intensive purposes. It's intents and purposes. See, you learn something new every day. If I just blew your mind right now, leave me a comment down below. I'd recommend considering a lease for your medium term rental, but I am gonna say that there are a lot more states out there that are a little bit more friendly to medium and long term rentals. Really, because mine are in California, the laws out there can really favor tenants a lot more than the landlord. So because of the California thing, that, that's why I'm protecting myself. I'm not quite so skittish about that in other states, but I also don't have medium term rentals in other states, except for Texas, actually, now that I think about it, and that one's in Austin, and that one does pretty well. And so for my final tip, I actually have a good friend, her name is Sarah Weaver. She's a friendly face at Bigger Pockets, and she's kind of like the medium term rental rental queen. So I wanted to ask her for a quick tip as it pertained to medium term rentals. And here's what she had to say. What's one thing that all medium term rental hosts can do to level up their listing? You must have blackout curtains in the bedroom. No, you do not need them in the living room or anywhere else, but they must be in the bedroom. And then my tip is to buy them from Target. They're the best price and the best quality. Also, if in between stays, there's damage, somehow there's a mark on them or they're broken or for whatever reason they need to be replaced your cleaner or handyman can quickly run to Target and replace them. See, that's a good tip because I can't tell you how many times I've stayed at Airbnbs where as soon as it's like 5 a.m. or 6 a.m., lights are like blaring in the house and you just wake up and you're like, oh, I just want to sleep in. I'm on vacation. So I actually could probably implement that in my own medium term rental. So I'll good send you a link. <laughs> I find that the, the blackout curtains make such a difference, especially if you are catering to traveling nurses. Mm, that makes sense because they just, they work all day, so they just want to sleep, basically. And actually, while I'm at it, Sarah and Zianna McIntyre actually wrote a book called 30 Day Stay. I would really recommend pre-ordering this because it'll teach you really a lot of good knowledge about the idea and the philosophies and the ways to approach medium-term rentals. At the time of this video coming out, it's available for pre-order, so please order it. Guys, it would really mean the world to me if you supported my bigger pockets, friends. Okay, cool. I'll leave links in the description below. And there you have it. A few tips to help you on your medium-term rental journey. Look, whether you wanna get into the short-term rental business or the medium-term rental business, Host Camp, my 12-month mentorship program, will teach you everything you need to know from analyzing deals, finding markets, furnishing, automating, and scaling your business. So if you're interested in getting into the Airbnb game, book a free call with my team over at hostcamp.com. I'll also leave a link in the description down below for you. But yeah, if you wanna learn the Airbnb game and learn directly from me, and maybe I'll see you in class. We have over 100 calls every single year, so. It's pretty lit. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, we will talk soon, probably in a week, my guess. All right, see ya, bye.